Hi everyone, or welcome back for part two of our assignment three video um, breakout. What we're going to do is we're going to now create a paddle, and this paddle is going to track along the bottom of the screen using the mouse. Okay, so wherever the mouse is on the screen, the paddle will follow um, follow it. Now, they do say that um, you want to be able to create that paddle and have it uh, stay consistent on the screen. So that means that if I go to the right, instead of having the paddle disappear, it's going to retain its paddle shape because the right side, that is a wall. So it will act as a wall and prevent that paddle from disappearing. So let's get down into it. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is under our setup game, we want to also go ahead and build a paddle. Okay, and of course, after you build the paddle, let's create the step for it. So private void build paddle. Okay, so now that we've built the paddle method, let's go ahead and create the paddle shape. So the paddle is a rectangle shape, so we're going to use the gRect uh, constructor to build our paddle. New gRect, okay, and give ourselves some dimensions. We already know that the paddle will have a width, okay, and the paddle will have a height that's given to you. Um, okay, um, one more thing you need to realize is that this paddle is actually going to be interacting with other elements of the class. And so when something like that happens, um, well, we want to make sure that we can call the private uh, variable of paddle. Uh, and I should be doing the same thing for brick, calling the private variable for brick. You don't have to, but for me, I like to do that because if I want to, I can refer to the same paddle that I've created. So private gerect paddle. Okay, so now I can actually call that in other methods and it would know what paddle I'm talking about. It's talking about that one paddle. Um, okay, so we created that paddle and we don't need that anymore because that's only in new constructions. And we need to set that paddle to be filled. So set fill true. And we gotta make the color of it too. So set color to be black. Okay. Just like that. Nice. And then we need to, after doing that, we need to add our paddle. Okay. Paddle, yay. Alright, so there we go. That's the construction of the paddle. Now, the one thing I forgot to do is to set the, the um, position of the paddle, and to do that, we want to set it in the middle, on the bottom, right there. And to do that, we're going to get the width of the app, width, divide that by 2, and subtract it by half the paddle so that it's centered. Because remember, it always creates the paddle or the uh, uh, rectangle from the top left side, or the left side in general. And so we need to subtract it by the paddle width in order to cut that in half so it is divided down the middle. Okay. Uh, once we do that, we also need to set our Y. Y is relatively easier because that's just going to be the height minus our offset. So we saw that the paddle has an offset of a... 30, 30 pixels. So, height minus that, and there you have it. So we created our paddle that will be centered and would be 30 pixels from the bottom, okay? So we go ahead and hit run, because we want to see how this looks. And uh, what you get is the paddle. Now notice there's a problem here, okay? So this implies that my application is not opening large enough to take into account that paddle, which kind of sucks. Um, not quite sure how to fix that. The uh, only thing I can do though mm -hmm. is to offset that paddle even more. So instead of offsetting that paddle by one, let's go ahead and do it by two. So when I rerun this program, uh, it will do that. Good. Now the last thing that we gotta do is have this track the track the mouse. So to do that, the first thing you need to do is to realize you gotta add something called mouse listeners, because this is 
what we're gonna turn on so that it can listen to the mouse that's there. And then under the chapter nine of the book, you're gonna find out that there are many different methods that can be used with the mouse. The one that we're gonna be using is public void mouse mode. So when the mouse does move, uh, we would be able to track that, you know the value of that. And then the input for that would be the mouse event. And the mouse event is the thing that we're gonna be calling in the method. Okay, so what we're gonna do is to understand a little bit about the dynamics of the paddle so we know um, how to write that algorithm. So when that paddle is anywhere on that screen or that mouse is anywhere on the screen, you will generate the paddle and the paddle gets created from that uh, mouse position. Now the problem happens when you get closer to the right side. As it gets closer to the right, you want it to retain its form. So by the time you get to a certain distance, the paddle has to, has to be just the paddle itself. So we don't want it to sink into the side of the wall. So we need to create a restriction for that. <clears throat> so one way of doing that is by using an if statement and then e.getx that will call our mouse cursor for the x position. Uh, if that is greater than or equal to zero and is less than that limit, so e.getx is less than our limit and what's the limit here? That's going to be the width minus the paddle width. Then what is this going to say? Well, this is going to tell us that um, our paddle will be set paddle dot set. There we go. Just wanted that to pop up. Our location will be the e dot get x with that uh, height to be displaced by two, not by one. Remember we changed that. So height minus two times um, <clears throat> paddle y offset. Okay, there we have it. So we created the condition for that. Now what would happen in the else, and not just any else, but else if, because we want to specify when e dot get x is greater than or equal to this dimension, right? So when it is, what do we want it to do? Well, we want that to be in the same position. So we're gonna create paddle.set. We're gonna set the location to be in the same position as this guy right here. So width minus paddle width, okay? So it would be there on the right side and also at the same height. So the height is not going to change either. Okay, so there we go. In the first condition, it's going to track left and right on the left side. And by the time it reaches over to the right, um, it will stay consistent uh, throughout that small little space. So that power will just stay there. Okay, and that's the idea behind it. So now let's go ahead and take a look to see if this actually works. So I'm gonna quick run this, and there's our paddle, and there's our track. So it's tracking left and right, and it's doing so beautifully. All right, so that's the end of part two.